Six Prison Story Family Salute. It's your boy Tim Snow back here with another one. And first thing I want to do is say thank you for all the love and support for the movement here. We're trying as best we can to show these young men that this is not the life they want. And we're trying to push for more transparency in Texas prisons. It's literally the only secret agency in the state of Texas like this. They're not uh, the CIA, they're not the FBI. They're a place that's responsible for taking care of their own officers and the inmates in their custody. They have a job to do and they're miserably failing at it. And you would never know because it's everything is swept under the rug. Everything's kept quiet. I believe the news medias have some type of backdoor agreement not to report on things when they find out about it because it's very rare. And a lot of this has to stop, y'all. This madness is another one on Michael unit, but this is going on in the entire system, literally system wide. They're putting officer safety at jeopardy by making them work too much overtime, not enough help. They're keeping the inmates, no recreation, feeding them bag lunches. Uh, most of the units can't even run field squad because they're too short. They don't have the officers to take it out. Things like inmates escaping off buses because their officers short, sleeping in the back, things like that. So something has to be done, even if Texas has to swallow their pride and ask for help. Come on, get bringing the uh, Texas National Guard or something. You have men been in there 20, 30 years going crazy, and they get no wreck, no nothing. And guess who they'll start taking that off, taking that out on them? is the officers. These people are there just trying to make a living, trying to support their family. And you're putting them in jeopardy in many, many different ways, causing them to fall asleep, standing up. You now took their chairs away. Well, hey, are you gonna take that extreme overtime away? I doubt it. It's a low paying position and they have to work the overtime to make their ends meet like a lot of other jobs. And every state isn't like that. The federal system isn't like that. So what's going on here in Texas in the second largest state in the United States of America that has an affluent economy? So we're not quite understanding. It's literally not that they're not advertising because you see billboards everywhere. You see on the back of every prison bus, call this number, we're hiring. And basically anybody can call and get a job if you're not a felon. But when you get there, you'll start seeing things that people with a conscience can't handle. So some people just back out. A lot of people call in all the time. They don't get fired because they need them. It's, it's an amazing situation. But right here, we're going to talk about the same little area where everything has been happening. They literally had these men on a wing with no guard present for an entire shift. But they did not have enough guards to even guard the cell blocks. And I know what you're thinking. Inmates probably love that, huh? They're running wild, no supervision. But it's not true. Because when you have no guard there, guess what? You're guaranteed you're probably not going to go to medical. You're not going to chow. You're not going to wreck. You're not taking a shower. You're not doing nothing. You're now locked inside of the steel box with no relief other than a little sink. Dip your towel, your seat in there, cover your body, you're pouring water on yourself all day. All right. With people with aggravating life sentences and 99 years and things like this, the next day when they're released, you think they're not ag agitated? They're already someone with mental problems, mental care, not receiving it. Texas is notorious for no matter what's wrong with you, they're going to give you an ibuprofen and a cold buster. You can have any problem. You might not get any care. So this situation here is getting out of control. What's going on up there in Tennessee Colony? You're going to have to figure something out because it's embarrassing. They were literally trying to run a chain bus and couldn't even do it because they didn't have enough officers. They're pulling officers off the wing that's already understaffed to go ride the transport bus. I think it was yesterday or day before. 
part of the unit lost power. Now, we already know there's no air conditioner in a Texas prison, but they do have big round shop fans, at least, just blowing around the hot air, trying to keep you alive. And even that was turned off. No lights, no anything. I mean, this big facility don't have a backup generator. That's unbelievable. It's amazing. And here again, it's not just the inmates. If a prison loses power, guess who? Well, guess who the first person sitting in front of that fan usually is? The CO. So when a prison loses power, now they got to deal with deathly heat too. Heat rises, and you have men up on the higher tiers that are literally in temperatures that can kill them. Nobody cares. Again, I'm not crying about it or anything, but I'm pointing out the lack of efficiency, the failure of the system here. What kind of state agency is run like this? 3,000 fire code violations, fires unreported, guards falling off the stairs, they're asleep. Can't get the power back on. Not enough guards to even guard the men. And you say, well, what's going to happen to them if they're in their cell? No big deal. There's men that go into insulin shock. There's men that get in that heat and have heart attacks. There's all kinds of things. Can be a murder going on. Somebody yelling for help. Anything like that. And here they go unanswered. I believe at that time they called a sergeant to come down and he was supposed to fill in for the guards. But the men are saying that that didn't happen. And literally, he was sitting out in the hallway on the desk. So I don't know what we do about this, man, other than just keep exposing and talking about it. TDCJ, you have to do something about the short staff. These men need recreation. These men need hot meals. Your fellow officers need protection. They need backup. They need rest. I mean, good Lord, man. What kind of job is this? What type of place are you running, Texas? It's literally embarrassment. When I talk to ex-cons from California and tell them how things go here, they can't believe it. Like, literally, it stuns them that are supposedly having the hardest prison system in the USA, if you watch TV. And when they hear about the uh, 120, 130-degree temperatures it can reach here, they hear about the uh, officer shortages and the level of violence and stuff going on in Texas, it's, it it amazes them. So that ought to tell you something right there. I don't know what we do about it. If you have family that works inside of a Texas prison, I think maybe you would want them to be safe, wouldn't you? If you have uh, literally inmates in there, you want them to at least have their basic human rights, medical care and fresh air every once in a while how about that even if the fresh air is go to field squad and work most inmates are happy to get out the building and go do that work that's non-paid and slave labor where they have to go urinate on their knees in the dirt that's how bad it is in the buildings and hot they want to get out there and go work in the sun and it feels better you have inmates escaping off transport buses because you're an officer short or an officer asleep. We said that it's just, it makes no sense, man. We got to do better, Texas. Protect your guards. Get these inmates human rights, man. Increase the pay, a better benefit package, whatever you have to do. Build better officer housing so these people will come because a lot of them can sleep free right there by the prison and they still can't find people to do it. It's amazing and it's sad. And I appreciate all the love and support, y'all. We definitely going to keep telling the truth.